My name is Rafferty, welcome back to Griftlands. At the start of this episode, I would like to mention that this series is sponsored by Clay. There is a link in the description down below for you to be able to pick up the game yourself. You know what you'll find in the Grog and Dog? Cashio always had a uh, way of turning up, like a splinter. Where's the hunter fish? Where's Sal? Halfway to putting a blade to your neck, Cashio. You rush forward to see the job done, but she sidesteps you easily, the brunt of her elbow coming down on the base of your skull. You blink the stars out of your eyes and recover, like she taught you to once. But she's at the door. She lingers just long enough to see her goon close in. Cashio? Cashio! But she's already gone. Go down quiet, Hunter. I promise it'll be just like going to sleep. Alright, I'm gonna convince a long way to help me. A long way likes me, so I actually have a, a little bit easier time doing this. The untrained yote is actually gonna count negatively for me in this. A long way, you're the bouncer. I'm hired to keep the ruffians out. Cashio's a class of her own. I'll vouch for you, Sal. We'll keep that leash straight. Alright. So you can see here, uh, Untrained Yote is giving my opponent an argument that deals two damage each turn to one of my arguments. Uh, so I'll definitely be taking that out. Let's go for Build Influence first, which gives some block to this. The Well, block being a composure here, rather. Uh, gives some composure to my argument so that I get to keep my influence. And then I'll just take out the Yote. Second. I mean... That'll take two attacks to do, right? Do I roll the Threaten for the sake of getting extra... Yeah, I'm gonna roll the Threaten for the sake of getting experience on it. Cool, it works. I should have used the one that gains influence instead of the other attack there. Uh, crafty. Intense and target previously hidden. Okay, so I need to take that out. Attack a random target for... Each enemy argument and bounty, so there's two. Well, actually, hang on, no, there's one. This is an argument. This this is oh no, core argument. That counts as an argument, I imagine. Okay. And it did count. Unfortunately, it hit the wrong target both times. Uh let's build some influence. Compose myself as well. And then pass. Or do I play buying time just to level it up? I'm gonna play that just to level it up. I think this fight is ultimately gonna be easy, so I think I can afford to do that. My enemy got apprehensive, apply two composure to a random argument in the end of turn, so that's gonna help you protect your crafty. Okay. Let's fast talk that to death. Let's have a look at our instincts and pick up a inspiration, which will take out the back line. Oh, that's a lot of damage. It looks like I'm about to take it. Uh defend myself. Wish I had an extra action for another defend, but I don't, so I won't. Did I reflect some of that? How'd I reflect it? I don't, I don't know what I had that reflected that, but yay. Deflect myself. Build some more rapport. Until I become exhausted, which will prevent me from getting any experience on cards for the rest of the fight, then I'm I'm just gonna not do anything here. Hang on. Oh, it's it's a Longwee's argument that's doing this. Whenever a Longwee deals damage, they gain composure equal to the unmitigated damage. If a Longwee's attack is fully mitigated, they take three damage. Buy some time. Get some instincts out. Improvise a card. Uh, yeah, I'll draw three cards. So both of our fast talks are going to level up at the end of this combat. That won't save the composure from dying here, though. Eh, fine. Alright. Let's upgrade two of our fast talks and the threat. Let's look at the threaten first, actually. Draw a card or gain a dominance. Draw a card because we're not going for a dominance build. We're not taking enough hostility cards to do that. 
draw a card or gain three composure. Gain three composure, defending myself whilst also attacking the enemy is huge. Spend and influence the card cost zero to play. I'll take that as well. Beautiful. It also actually has a, a higher base in its damage there. Number three negotiation cards to pick up. Cost one less for each influence you have. Lose one influence. Oh. Actually, hang on. These come with experience already on them? Next card is play twice or attack a random target. Evoke. Evoke. Play this card from your hand or draw pile for free when the requirements are met. Ooh, interesting. Play four hostile, but not from your discard. So it's only from your hand or draw. So you need to meet those conditions before you get to it. Interesting. I'm going to take another appeal to reason here. You're going to make me do your job for you? No, I guess not. All right. All right. I'll come along. Along we steps up to your side, ready to defend the Grog and Bog. Better late than ever, you suppose. All right. Spark Baron's boss, Sparky. This is self-defense. Battle time. All right. Ooh, apply cripple equal to the damage dealt by this card. Baby, that looks good. Okay, you've got power and uh, gain one power at the start of battle. It's a species boon. Okay, so that's at the start of battle. It's fine. Um, I could defend one of the other creatures as well, but since I have plus two power on turn one, I probably want to go pretty all out in terms of my damage. So let's go for a stab. Then mandible to weaken you. That will actually help my friends as well. Okay. And then a defensive surge. Actually, that'll only save two health on me, whereas a defensive surge... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to defend the untrained yote here. I want to keep the yote around long enough that I have the ability to defend it. Oh, sorry, train it, rather. The untrained yote around long enough for me to have the ability to train it. So is anything to say there? Uh, okay, so I'm looking for combo so we can... Hammer grip out a gain combo card. Okay. Do that for the extra combo as well. And then I will faint defend myself. At the end of tonight, I will rest in a bed and I will actually manage to heal up a decent amount. So I... Like, the untrained Yote especially. I don't know if it will. Spend one combo, draw a card with Switchblade. Oh, that's good. Finisher, gain one counter per combo. I don't think I have any combo at the moment. I thought I had three and then spent one. Oh, but I did take unmitigated... No, did I take... Did I take unmitigated? Yeah, I did. And then I spent one afterwards. Okay, so three, round it down to one. And then... Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Never mind. It's fine. Just had to make sure I knew how it was going on. Okay, yo, it's doing good damage there. Um, let's defend the Yoda again. Oh my god, I actually had one extra energy there. Oh. Could have done a little bit more. Hopefully I have the ability to put the enemy on the ground this turn though. Okay. Gain two combo. Gain one more combo. Draw another card. And then finisher. Beautiful. So after my allies attack this turn, you can see that the status effect will be applied by Boss Barky, but also they'll panic this turn. My allies attack first, so it's fine. There they panic. So I can accept their surrender, or I can kill them. I mean, what happens if I accept their surrender? Yeah, let's try it. Choose one of three battle cards to add to the deck. Apply bleed. Draw a card. Discard. Uh, draw a card. Discard a card. This is uh. This is like. It's card negative overall, obviously, because it's a card and you only draw a card, but you discard a card. So you've spent two cards to get one card back, right? Um, but it does enable discard damage, uh, discard builds rather. This is a rare maneuver. Discard a card, double the damage on a random card in your hand this turn. Yes. 
if I had discard builds going on, that would be useful. But I actually don't think any of these will. So I'm going to take money and negotiation. Another appeal to reason. Huge. Okay, so I get to choose a graft reward. Good. Uh, boss battle graft or a boss negotiation graft. Another boss battle graft. So gain one action at the start of your turn. Enemies no longer surrender. Ooh, uh -uh. Whenever you gain dominance, deal one damage to each target. I don't do that. Gain one action at the start of your turn. You can no longer earn a pet. Really? Oof. This isn't good for my builds. This isn't good for the fact that I just spent a bunch of money on a pet. And this means that I have to become ruthless. Guess I'm becoming ruthless then. Well, that shucked a rotten oyster. But we means we're worse. We're both still standing. What's done is done. Fire's only good if it soaks the engine, kid. I should have gone for Cashio as soon as I arrived. Now you're dragged into it too. None of that. You got a bit of grit in your eye. You'll wink it out once you get some sleep. I got a room set up for you in the back. With Cashio gone, a few patrons that rem uh, the few patrons that remain return to their drinks. Them that weren't spilled, anyway. I bet your blood's boiling, kid, but we survived the day. Fish uh, didn't get to the top of her field by indulging in her wounds. She barely flinches as she spit shines an old mug. Cool your feet, get some rest in the morning. Get some rest, rather. And uh, we'll come up with a plan in the morning. Rest in the back. Uh, okay. Along we will uh, eject patrons on my behalf, at least. I don't have the money for that. All right. Let's rest in the back. A good night's rest can't hurt. Unless I wake up dead, that is. Cashier won't come back on my watch. Bag's barricaded in the front. Has me. Nah, kid. Fish leads you through a curtain behind the bar, nodding towards a cozy room at the back. Rook unlocked. You've unlocked a new character with a whole new story and location with unique cards and gameplay. Give it a try when starting a run. Playing Rook doesn't delete your process, uh, progress rather with Sal. Your bed calls to you. And there's nothing else in the room that really does. Okay. Finish restore pretty significantly there. Made someone hate me. Made someone dislike me. Made two people like me and two people love me. Cool. A deck that has too many cards is hard to pilot. Getting rid of cards keeps healthy, uh, keeps your deck uh, healthy and lean. Neat. I, I did take a lot of cards there, but I took a lot of cards that are synergistic with one another rather than like just kind of scattershot cards. You slept through the night with one hand gripping your knife under your pillow, but then you slept that way every night since you were 12. It's early morning, but the Grog and Dog's patrons are already hard at work on their drinks. So I thought you should know. So I know you thought, sorry. So I know you thought I should hold off on that bounty, but after last night, if Cashio wants me to be your worst nightmare, I'd like to oblige. And how are you gonna do that? She knows you're here. She got money and goons to keep her safe. What do you got? Hmm. You? You're damn right. Lucky for you, I have a couple of contracts who want Cashio dead almost as much as you do. If you can convince them to work for you. Will they need convincing? Afraid so. The Admiralty doesn't trust hunters as a rule, but talk to my contract and you know, see if you can't convince her otherwise. But taking out Cashio would likely fill his, uh, make a space and the spree would be more happy to fill. I know someone who'll talk to you, especially if you can bring Cashio's head on a platter. Ask about the Admiralty. You think I should play nice with the law, huh? Why not? Lots of folks think bounty hunters are on the Admiralty side. Lots of folks do. To, lots of folks don't, too. The Admiralty, for example. Oh, Lord, we'll give you time. The Admiralty acts like tough guys around here, but they're broken, corrupt as the rest. Don't like it. There's always a spree. Ask about the spree. Lots of unclaimed bounties running with the spree, I take it. There, small friend, you're a barracuda. Everyone knows Cashio Banny on the lock. You got your side set high. Convince the down to that, and uh, he'll give you the leg up you need. Once you paid your dues, of course. And if I don't, then maybe he'll want to kill you. Or maybe he'll just want to be left alone. Peoples is peoples. That's very true. Ask about fish. You really okay with this after last night? We're in it now, whether we lack it or not. 
Leave my grudges where I like them as long as the hunt is still on. Absolutely. It's blood in the water. Then do it. You won't get no complaints from me. Ask about Cashio. Figures Cashio would come after you, no matter what you did. Well, it's not like I can come back as a lowly lumen sludger. She probably has an alert out for any bounty hunter who comes into port. Plus, you were asking around for Into, huh? Thought you said I should keep my head down? Yeah, well, I never forgot what Cashio did neither. Didn't seem right, you just come home to let bygones be bygones. And that bounty, it is a big bounty. The biggest. With that money, we could open three bars. Got it, fish. Dream big. All right. Let's head out of here and make our decision. So we have, what? Peaking sides, peaking sides, and then that's just the meat market. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to the meat market first. No, wait. Those are mercenaries available for hire. Okay, never mind. I want to go to the, the, uh, the night market. That's what I'm looking for. So suggests Olo can get me in the front door of an auction, but you're going to have to stooge for the Admiralty to get her help. The Admiralty is what passes for government around here, and they comport themselves more like an occupying army. Don't expect to make a lot of friends amongst the people if you pick this side. And then Fish says Nadan can sneak me into the auction if I do some work for the Spree. The Spree are a loosely organized band of outlaws and raiders that survive on the outskirts of the Admiralty territory. They rob from pretty much everyone and give mostly for themselves. Be prepared to run afoul of the law if you choose this path. And it on. The man meets your gaze with a face like barbed wire. Nadan, Nadan, right? I'm Sal. I hear you're a guy worth knowing. And I hear you've got an axe to grind. So I figure, why don't we bury it in a few skulls, huh? Word is you're after the biggest bounty in the bay, Cassio. And I guarantee you won't get anywhere nearer without me. But my help doesn't come cheap or easy. You do good work and survive to reap the benefits, then maybe we're in business. Ask about Cashio. Hold up. What exactly is it that you're offering? You want Cashio? I can get you Cashio. In a few days, the cult will be rolling into Murder Bay for their annual antiquities action. They sell relics and holy pardons to them that can afford it in exchange for labor contracts and other illicits. That does sound like Cashio's market, but auctions like that have exclusive guest lists. And that's where our business arrangement comes in. I can get you into that auction, but only if you can prove you deserve it. Ask about the auction. Are you sure Cashio will be there by herself? She might just send her goons to do her shopping for her. It ain't just about the goods this year. Big decisions get made. The Admiralty wants to annex, and they need the cult on their side to do it. Citizenship would make most say the variants choke, but it goes down smoother with some Hessian wisdom. And guess whose life gets a whole lot harder if labor contracts get regulated? The biggest debt broker in the Grifflands, I suppose. The Annex is a wrench in her whole operation. She'll be there to make sure it doesn't happen. So take that wrench and yank it. Ask about Nadan. I get that you're the one with advance, pal, but I'd like to know who I'm working with. Yeah, can't say I blame you with that fish out of water stink. If you were here, if you were from here, you'd have heard of me already. I'm the Scourge of Murder Bay. Folks actually call you that? I don't know, I never asked. Not much of a conversationalist. Huh. Ask about the work. So this work you're having me do... Favors. Yeah, right. It's illegal, I assume. That's up to you, ain't it? I only care about results. If you find a, gay, uh, find a way of getting me what I want while playing nice with the law, that's your time wasted, not mine. Ask about the Admiralty. I take it you're not a fan of the Annex? You're an Nick Derrick, ain't you? What has the Admiralty ever done for you? It's the cult that runs the Derricks. And it's the Admiralty that plays their lapdog, turning a blind eye. 
They don't care for law and order in Havaria. They only care to please their fish lords back across the sea. The Hessian Sea, the sea separating Havaria from the Deltrian mainland, believed to be the home of the cult sea god. Even if it means throwing good folk into the abyss. Heavy. I didn't make it that way, I'm just living with the consequences. Alright. A contract's a contract. I'd be happy to be in business with you, Nidan. Glad you convinced so easy. You do good on those favors, and maybe we're as copacetic as you say. And Cassio will be yours. First order of business, take this. Pick up my spree card. Apply a wound whenever I attack for the rest of the turn, or the next attack is played twice. Expend. Uh, next attack is played twice, I think. What is it? This will tell people you're under my protection. Nice. I've always wanted to learn a secret handshake. So put me to work, boss. I'm here to impress, ain't I? You're hungry. That's good. The Admiralty have gotten hold of an antiquity. They want to gift it to the cult to butter them up for negotiations. Let's sour that butter, shall we? You want me to steal the antiquity? Steal it, destroy it, whatever you like, so long as the Admiralty can't profit off of it. Okay, I get a quest at the start, uh, and I get to graph from a random draw at the end. Ooh, lovely. Spend one influence, deal an additional four damage, sure. We stole some intel on the route they're taking. All you gotta do is set up camp and they'll come to you. Ask about the antiquity. Antiquity's a dangerous ancient tech. My family used to dig them up for a living. Yeah, sure. yeah the Spark Barons keep everything dangerous for themselves. Spark Barons. A technocratic faction who retrofit new technology from ancient ruins, much to the cult's displeasure. Likely this is some old knick-knack to uh, decorate a priestly pedestal. Alright. Let's uh, go over it. Shakedown. The convoy transporting the relic will blah 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 blah. Unfortunately, it uh, got off the screen before I could actually read it all out. As you're walking down the road, you notice, spot rather, a merchant standing by a small stall. Greetings! Were you interested in buying a genuine ancient antiquity? Truly invaluable piece of history right here. These all look a bit homemade. No, no, my items are absolutely authentic, believe me. You don't. Haggle for a better price or buy the relic. Uh, haggle for a better price and then don't do it? I'm fine with that. I'm gonna haggle basically just so that I can get experience on my uh, composure, uh, on my negotiation cards. It's a bit pricey, isn't it? It's a one of a kind. It's a one of a kind relic. I'm not sure what you'd expect. Keep that beast away from me. Pose myself there. I'll appeal to reason just to take out the untrained Yurt. That'll save me some damage taken as well. Okay, this argument is... Uh, all cards cost an additional five shills to pay. Uh, to play, rather. Ugh. Well, that's going to be a lot of my money taken away. Okay, at least we managed to get rid of it at the end there. I'm not going to use the kickback. I don't want to have to pay that much. Okay, uh, you've also got Tribute. Uh, when dismissed, gain. Draw one extra card at the start of your turn. Cool. Um, spend an influence for additional damage. I mean, look, the extra damage just goes to the center afterwards anyway. Improvise a card. To all observation, because I have influence already, this is actually zero to deal six damage. It's pretty good, turns out. I'm also going to buy time, removing my final influence there. That's literally just for the sake of uh, trying to get buying time upgraded. I think it ultimately wasn't a good idea, because as soon as I removed that, I just redirected the enemy's intent directly to myself. 
and it was protected. I wasn't. Ooh, pay 15 shills if you end the turn with this card. Take eight damage. Ouch. Ugh, rough. Please stop trashing my deck. Okay, is that impatience gone? It is impatience, but it, it's not stopping experience gain for us. To influence there, and then deal seven damage. And deflect. And pass the turn again. Another bad idea put in my deck. Hopefully, I don't draw it next turn. I don't have the ability to even play buying time at this point. Draw three cards, sure. Okay. Gain an influence. Pay two of my influence to get rid of that. Overbear. And it only does one. Beautiful and then threaten. That's as many cards as I can play there at the end. Okay. Build Rapport gets an upgrade as well. Do I want this one to become uh, Ambush in my opening hand? I want one of them ambush and then I want one of them just for more influence. But more influence is also really good for us because I have three copies of, of the, uh, this card is cheaper if you have influence in my deck. And then this deflection upgrade to by four. I don't think I'd need any of these. I don't need another intrigue. I, I just need to draw my uh, influence gain more commonly. You and I both know this isn't legit. I'll give you a fair price for it. I've I've never been so insulted in my life. How dare you besmirch my product? All right, fine. But you tell anyone who asks, it's a real deal. Oh, don't worry. I intend to do exactly that. I would buy the relic here. I just don't have money to do it. On second thought, I think I'm good. Clearly the faith doesn't call to you. Walk in the shallows, friend. You find the route Nadan mentioned and lurk out of sight. It's not long before an ostentatious caravan approaches. The caravan is escorted by a few guards and a Luminari, the most dangerous of the group. Let's rest a moment. We've, we've traveled all day and I wish to reflect in prayer. The Lord As a light Luminari. Eh, you don't look like you'd say that. As you like, Luminari. Wait a bit and observe the group. You hold your breath and wait. The guards begin to sharpen his weapon on the leather strap. I'm sorry, but I can't focus while you work. I'll seek solitude in the forest. So that'll give me an opportunity to actually attack. I'm sorry, Luminary. I, I can... No, you have your duties. I have mine. Guard the relic, please. With the Luminary out of the way, you emerge from your hiding spot. Why, greetings. Old citizen. This is Admiralty business. Just a question, my good fellow. Do you keep the faith? Do you walk in the shallows? Of course. We're none of us faithless here. What's it to you, citizen? I'ma ask to see the relic. I'm a pilgrim and a scholar, an expert in antiquities, in fact. I was just in Grad Bog where I made a frightful discovery. Several recently unearthed relics were fakes. The Spark Barons told me they just sold one to the Admiralty, and I knew you had to be found. Thanks. The Spark Barons assured us it was perfectly authentic. So you do carry the relic. I sure could certainly examine it for you, to be sure. Keep that beast away from me. Right. That boosted rapport. Honestly, it's probably like just double defend myself here. Your core argument is incept a planted evidence if one doesn't exist at the end of the turn. Okay. Ooh, attack a random target for once uh, each any argument. They have an argument in interrogate there that's also damaging me and the untrained yo. That's actually really good. So we'll be using this. I 
it did want it to be better than that, but it's okay, I guess. Okay, that's defended, so I don't need to remove the yoke this turn. I just need to remove the interrogate. Okay. And then neither of these will defend me. I should eventually get rid of that Yoda anyway. Spend two influence to gain no actions here. Basically just to play the buying time. Fine. Because then I only need to play buying time one more time before it upgrades. Okay, this new argument is Zeta will steal 10 shills from Sal each turn. That's not good. Obviously. Planted Evidence deals four damage to the owner's core argument. So you'll kill that and then I'll be targeted for four, but I'm already protected for four. So instead I'm going to apply my composure up here and then threaten again. We're going to get so many cards leveling up out of this encounter. Okay. Gain an influence. Use it to deal extra damage. I really want to use Sol's Instinct again here, but I should compose myself and defend. We'll do the responsible thing. Okay. Appeal to Reason is about to level up if I use it here. Beautiful. Okay, let's build rapport, which will enable me then to play buying time. I think both of those just leveled up as I did that, by the way. So I don't get to remove the abuse of power and save myself the extra HP this turn, but what I do get is way better. The ability to level up more stuff. Appeal to Reason can be leveled up now, and I can make it do more damage or cost less by base. More damage. We have the ability to play it constantly. Build Rapport. I think I will just give this more influence as well. And then this, uh, spend only one influence to gain one action is, is actually fine for us. We want to keep more influence than uh, we care about getting more actions. Uh, threaten. If this has draw, I'd love that. Attack with this card twice. And that's only good if I have dominance actually boosting each of the attacks. So I'll take the draw there. Nice. Much better. Don't need any of these. Brainstorm, maybe, if I had have gotten the other one with the two actions. But honestly, I'm kind of fine just casting what I get. I've dedicated my whole life to the study of relics. My eyes can't be fooled, I can assure you. Well, I suppose there's no harm in you having a look at it. My fingers will be as discreet as the dewdrop. Zeta steps aside. You crawl inside the caravan and spot an ornate eelskin box. The relic sits on a bed of silk and feels like tallow. Looking at the relic, it's clear it's genuine. But it's a genuine trinket. No wonder the spark barons were willing to pass it on. Still, the Hessians might like the gift all the same. Steal it. The relic easily slips into your pocket, and you exit the caravan looking prim as you can manage. Well, are we carrying a fake or what? I have good news, soldier. It's genuine. I was blessed to be even in its presence. That's a relief. Now scram, citizen, because you really have no reason to be here. You give a simpering bow before quickly making your exit. And a don. Give Nadon the antiquity. Hey, here's the antiquity. You're right. It's just decor, but it's your decor now, boss. What am I supposed to do with this? Hang it in my war room and pretend it's a weapon? Actually, yeah. That'll do. You get paid 195 shills, as well as ooh, gain two composure whenever an argument uh, opponent's argument is dismissed by a card. Six max revolve. Eh. Whenever you break defense with an attack, apply two bleed and gain four defense. It's one of these two. 
I do remove my opponent's arguments consistently. I'll take Kingskin. I'm done with you for the day. But this is an exclusive arrangement. If you have other work that needs doing, go for it. Ask about Murder Bank. So, are you from here? Yeah, there's murder in my blood and my blood in the bay. Grim, but evocative. Must be hard to defend your territory. It's got to be a lot of competition. Sometimes folks get out of line, but not for long. Uh huh. Ask about Nadon's thugs. How do your people? How do your people feel about you working with a hunter? Didn't ask. If they got feelings, that's on them. You didn't talk about it with them? I don't talk. Yeah, so I see. Ask about Ulu. You know, there was someone else who said they could get me into the auction. In the Admiralty. I think she wanted to get Cashio as much as you do. Maybe I should reach out? I mean, if you're willing to work with a hunter, maybe... No. I don't work with switches. At least of all, that switch. You mean Olo? That was her name, I think. It is. Don't say it again. Okay, then. Enough questions. Sure, you're the boss. And before we go and pick up our next mission, we've got these two options. A healing spring. Uh, a rare lumen fissure has opened in the bedrock here. Funny things happen when raw lumen vapors get to dry land. Also, recon force. Ooh, that's very, very difficult, apparently. Investigate the wilderness location for signs of illegal activity. Uh, there's a couple of other quests around. Friendly fanatic. Uh, there's also a vial of slurry for a long way to give me a gift. I'm gonna go to the healing spring for a gift here. If it's just heal, resolve, and stuff like that, that's fine. You find a fissure in the ground, fuming with toxic vapors. You're kidding me, right? It's only health that this does. On the far side, you see a small, rare healing wart, grown fat with broad leaves under the lumen's influence. Well, can't do anything there. You decide against touching the luminized plant. The plant shudders as if stung by your ejection. To your amazement, it pulls up roots and slithers away into the bush. Uh, you hope it was just a hallucination. Well, having given up the opportunity to get the other thing, now I have to choose a quest. But we're going to be doing that in the next episode. At the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Griftlands. There is a link in the description down below where you can purchase this game for yourself. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.